Why is it still called pat testing? Isn't it time to call it something else? Hello there, I'm Standards Director of PATA, which is the Portable Appliance Testing Trade Association. And I also run a company in the UK called Pat Testing Expert. I run courses all across the UK and I've been involved in the pat testing industry for more than 30 years. I want to address what has become quite a thorny issue, which is to do with the phrase pat testing, what it stands for and what it means, what's included when we carry out pat testing and whether or not we should now be calling it by a different name. I'm going to address the myth that's been floating around for a while now, which seems to be implying that the phrase pat testing doesn't exist anymore. And then running parallel to that, we have all the arguments, sometimes quite vicious and nasty, about who should be testing what and what should be included in a typical pat testing regime. We've seen a few posts recently on social media claiming that the term pat testing doesn't exist anymore or that it's being replaced by a new term, maybe electrical equipment testing, EET, or maybe some other new definition. This is quite a complex issue, and it seems to have been a topic of much debate over the last 30 years. It certainly seems to provoke some strong opinions every time it crops up. However, it just boils down to a couple of simple basic facts. Unfortunately, when people try and debate this on social media, especially on Facebook, it often ends up degenerating into an argument. However, it is quite a trivial matter, and so it should be relatively easy to set the record straight. It is true that some people object to the phrase pat testing because of the extra T, portable appliance testing testing, and this has been the case for many years. The term is in fact an example of what we call redundant acronym syndrome, or RES syndrome if you want to be ironic, in the same way that people sometimes say LCD display, ATM machine, HGV vehicle, or even PIN number. It's also the case that not everything that can be tested could be thought of as portable. Items such as dishwashers or fridges would come under a normal pat testing regime, but most people would not consider them to be portable. There is even some debate about the term appliance, as this word has been traditionally referred to items such as white goods, uh, washing machines, fridges, dishwashers, etc., as used in the home, rather than other types of electrical equipment. However, it's fair to say that most dictionaries now do define the word appliance as any device which performs a useful task, which of course does encompass the majority of items of electrical equipment. There is even question of the word testing, because most of the faults found with electrical items are found during the visual inspection, rather than the electrical tests. So it's easy to see why some people might object to the term pat testing. Whilst all of this is slightly irritating, the term pat testing has been in common parlance for more than 30 years and it isn't going anywhere fast. So why are people confused? Essentially, there are two types of electrical system which need checking. In simple terms, we think of these as the wiring in the building and the equipment which is connected to it. The equipment part can be further subdivided into two areas depending on how it's connected to the supply. The vast majority of items will be connected via a plug and socket and can therefore be pat tested, but the remainder will be hardwired into the mains. That's where it gets complicated. That's what we call fixed equipment testing or FAT. It therefore makes sense to think of three types of electrical inspection and testing which can be carried out. The wiring checks on the building, I think few would argue that this is a job which should only be undertaken by an electrician who has specialist qualifications. This process is generally now referred to as an electrical installation condition report, EICR. Then we have the items connected via a plug and socket. This is what we'd now refer to as PAT testing. And then finally, we have the electrical equipment permanently collected to the supply, such as hand dryers or wall heaters, these should be checked by someone competent, either a qualified electrical engineer or a PAT tester who has received additional training. I was on the IET committee that updated the last code of practice, and I took part in many long discussions about this issue. My recollection was that we eventually agreed on a common sense approach to not mention PAT in the code of practice, 
in order to reinforce the idea that the book applied to all electrical equipment, not just equipment with a plug. This is actually specifically mentioned in the preface to the fifth edition. And I quote, Generally, fixed wiring electrical inspections will verify the installation as far as the connection point for equipment. This can leave many items of permanently installed equipment, such as hand dryers, failing to be checked, as they come neither under a company's portable appliance testing, PAT regime, nor under the fixed wiring inspection and testing program. It's important to note that it is to reinforce the point that the code of practice refers to all electrical equipment, regardless of how it's connected to the supply, that the code of practice makes no mention of the term PAT testing. The intention has never been to replace the term, but merely to reinforce the message that the book covers all equipment, not just portable. Some people have seen that the term is not included in the fifth edition and have taken that to mean that the term does not exist anymore. In fact, the preface erroneously states that references to portable appliance testing or PATS have been removed. But actually, the first four editions of the Code of Practice, dating back to 1994, avoided the use of the term PAT for exactly the same reason. So the term hasn't been removed from the Code of Practice, it was just that it was never there in the first place. Unintended Consequences the 18th edition wiring regulations deal with all building wiring and the code of practice deals with all the equipment connected to it. Despite this, many people have still assumed that the code of practice only applies to portable appliances, even sometimes referring to the code of practice as the PAT testing code of practice. So it does make sense for the IET to avoid the use of the term in the book. However, this has had an unintended consequence because people then mistakenly think that those people who are qualified in PAT testing are somehow required to test fixed equipment as well. Some people have undertaken a City and Guilds 2377 qualification with the intention of being able to test the electrical equipment in their office, only to be completely overwhelmed with information about testing fixed equipment or being told that they somehow have to test those items. Some people have even attempted to test fixed equipment, such as hand dryers or water boilers, but have ended up creating danger because they are not qualified in safe isolation procedures, don't have access to the right locking off equipment or enough experience to safely disconnect and reconnect the appliance from its fixed wire connection point. This one issue alone has caused no end of argument and debate from those arguing that people without a formal electrical qualification should not undertake pad testing at all, to certain manufacturers adding features onto their PAT test machines to assist those in testing fixed equipment and encouraging those without formal electrical qualifications to test fixed equipment after simply watching a short online video. PATA has been very concerned about these issues and has issued specific guidance to help resolve some of the confusion, in particular to stress that people who are competent in PAT testing should restrict their work to items which plug in but leaving the fixed appliances to testers who have additional competence and training to enable them to test them safely. Now, it is true to say that a lot of UK-based PAT testing companies do carry out testing on fixed appliances as well as portable appliances because their engineers have been trained in safe isolation procedures and have had additional training in how to correctly test those appliances. But that certainly does not mean that anyone who has completed a short course in PAT testing should be attempting to test those fixed items as well. If you are watching this video because you've recently completed a PAT testing course, such as the one that I run through PAT Testing Expert, but you're being asked to test the hand dryers in the toilets or the wall heaters in your office, and you're not really sure what you're doing, then the best advice is to leave those items for someone else. Don't create a dangerous situation for yourself by attempting work that you're not qualified to do. So, PAT testing still exists? Yes, most definitely. PAT testing is a widely used and recognised term in the UK. The term has become synonymous with the process of inspecting and testing electrical equipment to ensure that it is safe for use. A whole industry has evolved over the last 30 years, carrying out safety checks on electrical equipment in businesses and organisations. PATA, 
lists among its members more than 200 professional practicing businesses who are out every day checking equipment in offices, factories, schools, shops, rental properties and other premises. Every day they discover items which have faults and by identifying them and removing them from use or repairing them, accidents or fires are prevented. It is of course impossible to quantify how many accidents and fires are prevented due to pat testing, but it is prudent to look at other countries where pat testing is not carried out and identify much higher incidences of accidents with faulty electrical equipment. It is fair to say that the pat testing industry is not perfect. Like all industries, there are rogue traders and cowboys, and this is something that Patter is working to improve. The pat testing industry is currently unregulated, and although most people in the industry do work to high standards, a few bad apples do give the industry a bad reputation. Patter is working hard to raise standards in the industry, share good practice among its members, and generally improve the reputation of the industry. So why not electrical equipment testing, or EET? Actually, this term does make sense and it is certainly a good way to shorten the term in-service inspection and testing of electrical equipment, which is the title of the IET Code of Practice. But again, this term is best used to describe the testing of all electrical equipment, including both fixed and portable. So it's perfectly sensible to continue to refer to the fixed wiring checks as EICR, and to use the term EET to refer to equipment tests. However, we should still be careful to distinguish between fixed electrical equipment and portable electrical equipment and keep the term PAT testing to refer to checking items which connect via a plug and socket. Although the term PAT testing does not appear in the Code of Practice, this does not mean that it doesn't appear anywhere else. It is used extensively by HSE, by OPSS, the Office for Product Safety and Standards, Trading Standards, the Department for Business and Trade, formerly Bayes, and it crops up in all manner of documents in the equipment hire industry, property rentals, hospitality, new product safety standards, etc. So in summary, the term pat testing is certainly not perfect, but it is a good term which describes the activity well. It's well established and widely recognised within the electrical industry and among businesses and individuals who are responsible for maintaining electrical equipment. It is a shorthand way of referring specifically to the inspection and testing of portable appliances and other small electrical equipment. The term electrical equipment testing can be used, but this should be used to refer to all electrical equipment, whether it is connected permanently to the supply or via a plug and socket. EET could be considered a handy abbreviation of in-service inspection and testing of electrical equipment, but not a replacement for PAT testing. The term Portable appliance testing or PAT testing has been active in the public discourse for more than 30 years and it's familiar and it's recognised across all industries. Although it certainly has its detractors, we hope that this video will provide some clarity and explain why the term should continue to be used going forward. Quite simply, PAT testing works, PAT testing is here to stay.